Our first caller is Danielle from New Hampshire. Danielle, how's it going? How can we help you? It's going great. Thanks. Guys, I just want to let you know how grateful I am for you um, and all that you do. Um, earlier this year, I lost my dad uh, to COVID. Um, so it got me to start thinking about my own health and my own mobility. Um, about June of this year, I started working with an FRC coach. Um, and she basically has me unwinding everything that I've learned. Um, so I've always been active. I was a member at the Y. I like to swim. I like to hike. I like to ski. Um, but I started to think about um, there's things I can't do. Like, you know, we're in Ken Stretch and we're learning about we're going to flex our toes and we're going to roll our ankles around. And, and so I'm learning, a, I'm getting new mobility, but I'm still struggling. Um, and then I came across this article and, and I'm just wondering, so basically I'm 5'9", I'm about 185 pounds and I'm a like a tall pear, I guess you could describe me. Um, and just wondering how does your body shape fit into some of the exercises that you may be able to do or not do? So for instance, a squat. I can get really low when I have no weight, but as soon as I put weight on the bar, I'm back to being parallel. Um, I know what the answer I want you to say is, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, I'm just curious to get some a little bit of feedback, I guess. Yeah, no, that's a good question. So the answer is actually in what you just said. You could do a full squat with no weight, but when you add weight, then your form obviously goes in the wrong direction. So that's a strength issue. How big of a role does your body shape play in yeah. in a lot of these exercises? Somewhat of a role, small role for most people, because a lot of these movements are kind of foundational, fundamental, you know, pieces of human movement. So it's like walking, right? So does a person's body shape play a role in their ability to walk to some degree, but really small, right? Because we all evolved to be able to walk. Well, you also evolved to be able to squat and press and row and rotate to some degree and do some split stance exercises. Now, when you get into very technical movements that require uh, very specific types of mobility, then maybe it plays a larger role. But when you're talking about, you know, most of the exercises you're going to do in the gym, uh, a lot of it has to do with strength, mobility, and connection. And much less of it has to do with just our body shape or the length of our limbs or how our joints look. And I know there's like this movement in the fitness space to talk about, you know, hip joint and the socket and the length of the femur and, you know, and yes, there's definitely cases where that plays a role, but it's, it's a lot smaller than people think. For the most part, all of us have the capability uh, to be able to do most of these movements. And what gets in the way is just, you know, tightness, weakness, mm -hmm. and lack of stability. Danielle, uh, first of all, I think the fact that you're doing FRC and you've hired a coach is incredible. Um, I think uh, everything that they're teaching over there is is phenomenal. Oh, it's, it's life changing. Yeah, absolutely, it really uh, is. Yeah, no, I love I love hearing when people uh, actually sign up and start going through that process. It was life changing for me. So, um, I, I think that's great. Are you doing any? Uh, are you following a maps program or anything in conjunction with it? Or are you doing that by itself? Uh, just by itself. And then I work with her, the trainer, three days a week um, doing heavy lifting and stuff like that. So oh, okay. I I am the kind of person that needs that constant correction and that for right now where I'm at, um, I just need someone standing over me and correcting form. And like I said, I, I have done push-ups wrong. I didn't realize this. I was doing push-ups wrong my whole life. Um, <laughs> so it's a little bit eye-opening, but I I just need someone right now where I'm at to to guide me through the phases and the exercise and using proper form. Are they are they coming with you in person or are you doing this virtually? How are you doing it right now? No, I'm going to the, her studio. Oh, nice. Well, I mean, yeah. and you know, I tell you what, like if you didn't, if you weren't following something, I would have recommended something like Maps Performance. I think would complement uh, what you're doing with FRC, but uh, even our programs. Uh, I think we've said this many times on the show. Nothing beats a really good coach in person, yeah. somebody who can call an audible while they're coaching you and explain to you why this feels this way or what's going on with your body. Hey, let's move over here and now do these movements. And if that coach is doing that stuff with you, 
Yeah. Um, I think that it's at this point, it's more just about being patient. Yeah. Be patient, stay consistent. You're doing the right things. I think you're on the right track by having someone like an FRC coach help you out. I think you're in great hands. Yeah, I mean, going back and, and going through all the different clients that had limitations, you know, there there are you know, very, very few examples of morphology sort of getting, you know, in the way of, of being able to attempt these types of movements. It's every single time I've gone through it and we've, you know, the more educated I got with techniques like FRC and, you know, other types of, you know, ways to address connectivity issues and stability issues, uh, it really highlights, you know, just the amount of times you, you've just patterned this certain process forever to where you've, you've self-regulated and sort of limited that uh, a lot of times just based off of like the, the type of habits and routines like you've done over the years. Uh, and there is a way to get, go in there. And like you said, kind of unwind and unpack and, and, you know, dive into that process and see like it unlocks a whole new potential uh, movement wise. Uh, and that's what I love about, you know, those types of uh, modalities is it really like highlights the abilities uh, are there, but you have to do maybe sometimes more work uh, to, to get back to the root of the, of the actual cause. Yeah, and, and Danielle, you, it says in your written question that you started in June of this year. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah just, you got to get just it time. warming up. You're, you're just, just yeah. you're just so literally. I, I know, but stronger. it's really hard when when someone says you don't have the prerequisite to do that. And you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I can do it, you know. Well, you know what? You so don't don't don't. T I saw too that it, you. I mean, you admit that it's kind of a shot to the ego for somebody who's been working yeah. out and doing fitness. You know what? Um, it was it was challenging for me too. I remember the first time that I hung out with uh, Dr. Brink and he broke me down. Here I am, a personal trainer. I've been training other people my whole life and then basically to tell me the same exact thing. Hey, you don't have the prerequisites to be squatting that much weight on your back. You should be doing X, Y, and Z. Uh, and and I'm also somebody who falls under that like you know morphology of is not ideal for squatting really deep. I'm six foot three. I do have a long uh, a long femur. I have poor ankle mobility. So it was extremely challenging for me to get to where I'm at. That's why that's why too today I'm I'm more proud about my squat depth than I am any PR I've ever hit in my life. As far as oh I've you know I've squatted 420 pounds. I've benched yeah. X. Like I don't really care about that. I'm more proud about the the change in movement that I made in the yeah. the depth. You have of, totally different metrics now that you're applying towards these totally. these exercises right. and yeah, and you you just have to look at it completely differently like of how much you're accomplishing but in a completely different path than you yeah. were before. You're right? you're on the right track, Danielle. You're doing yeah. the right stuff. So just hang in there and yeah. you're going to continue to improve for for a while. I appreciate that. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for calling right. in. Yeah, a lot of people don't realize that by the way, forget mobility, forget what this person's talking about. If any, if someone hires me as a beginner, it's, it takes six months Dude, at least so humbling. before they really, st I'm able to really start pushing them with their workout. Literally for the, this is the average, but it takes at least six months. I know, but she's a, that happens. And she's an athlete, dude. This is, I can totally connect with this feeling. Like when she said that, you know, there, it's tough to be somebody who's been hiking, swimming, running, biking, you know, playing sports your whole life. And then have somebody break you down and basically say you've been doing yeah. all that wrong right. your whole oh, life. Yeah. yeah, it's a and shot to the gut. Yeah, and there, there's these things. It, it can be a shot. And then it is a, I think, um, you know, mobility progress is seems to be uh, a little more daunting than seeing just more weight. It's, I feel like it's easier to get strong. In my opinion, it's easier to add three to five pounds to the bar on almost any exercise you're doing than to see yourself get an extra inch or two of depth. Well, it's more, I guess, ego rewarding. It's counterintuitive. It? Yeah. yeah, it's it's just more ego rewarding. You don't you don't. I mean, you you, you want to brag about your new PR, but you know, I went you know half an inch deeper on my exactly. Squat. Nobody else gives a shit that I can yeah. get. You know, it's like how much are you squatting? Well, I mean, it's like, well, for me, this is what I'm concerned about. So yeah, that that plays a role. Yeah, too. and back to what I said, it's it's it takes a while. Um, it, it doesn't mean you're not you don't have a certain level of fitness or stamina or strength for what you were doing. It's just you're relearning movements, and it takes it takes a while. She's probably already made tremendous improvements in that short period of time. But wanting it to happen faster, it does just take time. But once you get there and you start to get there fast, you start to get there faster and faster. It's a snowball effect. Well, and a lot of this is just reframing the way you look at, you know, kind of exercise. And to, to Justin's point, 
Um, I had my nephew just call me recently. He just he just transitioned out of MAPS Anabolic. He's going into MAPS Performance, and he's kind of like overviewing the workouts for the first phase. And mm -hmm. he's like, you know, this seems too easy for me. Should I add? He was, he was yeah. calling to ask if he should add sets or do some of that. I said, listen, I need you, and I know him really well, obviously, so I can I have a little more insight. I'm like, I need you to look at this program completely different than the way you looked at MAPS Anabolic. When you went into MAPS Anabolic, it was about building your metabolism, about getting stronger. Now that we're moving into performance, I really don't care if the workout looks like it could be easier, it could be harder, it could be more. You're Get away from the, I want to be strong, and that's where you're heading. Just even though that's your, maybe your long-term goal, the goal of this program is to perfect your movement, is to increase mobility. So when you go into a workout... Let's say you're doing like the reverse lunge to press with the the landmine, which is a unique exercise. A lot of people may have not done that before. I, I care less if you called me and said, hey, Adam, last week I was doing that with 50 pounds and now I'm doing it with 80 pounds. I, I would rather you say, I, I started off with 50 pounds and I actually had to back off to 40, but man, I the movement feels yeah. so smooth. It looks so good. You know, I can I can you slow can control it. it. Yes. Yeah. So, and that that's the idea is you, you, but it's hard if you are, you know, like my nephew who's, wants to be, he's a, you know, ex football player, strong guy. Like that's all he cares about is getting buff and strong or losing body fat. It's all centered around that and just getting him to wrap his brain around. When we are now working on movement and and mobility, it's a different mindset going into it. So I think she needs to do the same thing as is stop worrying about how fast you ran or swam before, forget about how much weight you squatted or bench press before, and now becomes, you know, what did the movement look like last year and what does the movement look like this year with the work that I've been putting in and and start Start being proud of yourself for the gains that you've made in that direction versus the weight going up or down on the bar. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.